Is that Steins Gate in the background? It is. That's cut at his face. <laughs> what the heck? There was already a response from her. Wait, I, I didn't get to read. Let me read. Let me read. Okay. Okay, so this is new. He, he never talked to her uh, via the internet before like that with a video cam. So this is new. <laughs> Look at her face. What the heck? Oh my gosh. Yo, me literally every morning. <laughs> Get him, Suzaha. Put him in a chokehold. Do it for me. Do it for do it for all of us. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. How's it going, everybody? Hudlumut back with some more Steins Gate Zero. And uh, last time, well, not a whole lot happened actually. Uh. The only thing that was really pertinent to us that we haven't already seen that seemed to be different um, from the first route uh, was that, if I remember correctly, uh, Amadeus is still using uh, Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha as though she was actually the real Kuditz, which I think in the first route she wasn't using it. Um, other than that, Everything was pretty much the same, and I feel like the kid from The Incredibles who's just on his little tricycle after Mr. Incredible asks him, What are you waiting for? And he says, I don't know, something amazing, I guess. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm I'm waiting for, something amazing, I guess. So uh, with that, let's just keep on trucking. I can't skip. You know, it won't let me, so for, for whatever reason, it believes this is pertinent for me to know. I was able to skip a certain portion, and I can no longer skip, at least from what I can tell, so uh, I guess we'll just keep going. All right. After Fabuki's exam was over, we went to her room and listened to her complain, and then the visit was over. Just like Dr. Leskinen had said, she looked just fine. She told us she was ready to leave the hospital and jog all the way home. Mayuri and the others were relieved, but I felt worried. Did I need to talk to Dr. Leskinen about reading Steiner after all? But how would I explain it? It might be a better idea to talk to Maho and have her explain it to him. I couldn't come to an answer right away. We said goodbye to Kade and Yuki at one of the stations on the way back. Before we got to Ikebukuro, I remembered to take out my phone and open the web browser. I went to at channel, eager to see how she'd respond to the bait I spread this afternoon. <laughs> I put my hand over my mouth to stifle the noise. Huh? Mayuri had been standing next to me, and she was leaning over at my screen. I fished her up all right. Wait, what's that say? So, it was Fitzgerald and Lorenz who based their hypothesis off that experiment. Einstein himself said it had nothing to do with his theories. You don't even know that? How ignorant are you? Lol. <laughs> I didn't think it would go this well. The timestamp was from just 30 minutes ago. I decided to respond immediately using the same name, Salieri's neighbor. You're the ignorant one. <laughs> In a letter written before his death, Einstein said that he was aware of Michelson and- No! Come back! I didn't get to read the full thing. I posted and then reloaded the thread. There was already a response from her. Well, I, I didn't get to read. Let me read. Let me read. Okay. Uh, in, the la in the letter written before his death, Einstein said that he was aware of Michelson and Morley's uh, experiment. Uh, and then, I know that, duh. All he said was that he knew of the experiment. Obviously. Einstein used the 
Fizua experiment. Uh, and I can't read the rest because the words are kind of blocking it. Uh, so maybe I will be able to read it in a moment. The time lag between the posts was just 21 seconds. It was kind of irritating to have her come after me so hard. It was as if she was insulting me as a person. <laughs> well, I was the one who'd deliberately written in mistakes, so I should have expected it. Uh, okay. And stellar aberration uh, to come up with the theory of relativity. Uh, you just can't let anyone else win, can you? I see you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Are you Mozart? <laughs> the thread's other residents were probably confused. Everyone except for her. Mayuri had been watching our exchange and looked at me confused. Do you know this Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha person? Yeah. They're someone I've known for a long time, I think. Now then, how would she reply to the nickname Salieri's neighbor and post I just wrote? I was curious, but there wasn't an immediate response like before. The train reached Ikebukuro Station. Oh, Karin! We're here! The train slid into the station and stopped. I reloaded the thread one more time before the doors opened. And there was a very short response from Kiri Gohan and Kamehameha. What's going on here? Imakita Industries, who are you? <laughs> there could be no doubt now. This Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha was Kuritz. All right, now we're back with Suzaha. So that that I believe was new. I don't remember seeing that before. So okay. It was a very hot day in 1998 when Suzaha said goodbye to Kagarishina. She'd gone to get food and water from the local store. And when she'd come back and open the hatch, Kagari was inside, screaming. Oh, come on! How does this stupid thing work? She looked inside and saw that Kagari was slamming her tiny hands down on the control console. What are you doing? Uh... Kagari shrank back when she saw Suzaha. Uh, I'm not. This isn't what it looks like. Answer me. But... But... I woke up and you were gone. And it was dark and the lights wouldn't turn on. And it's so cramped and scary in here. So I tried to open the door. And then when I was fiddling with it, this happened. Kagari started to cry. I'm sorry, Big Susa. I'm sorry. But I was really scared. I see. Suzaha relaxed her guard. Kagari had PTSD from her time as a war orphan, and she hadn't fully recovered yet. Mayeti had once told her that she got very frightened in dark and cramped places. It would make sense if waking up in the dark caused a panic attack. And the time machine could only function with Suzaha's biometric authorization. Someone of Kagari's size wouldn't be able to break the console, either. You passed out from the shock of time travel. So I wanted to let you get some rest. I'm sorry. Suzaha grabbed one of Kagari's tiny hands to help her up. 
and then led her outside the machine. Wow! It's so hot! Kagari, promise me that you won't touch the switches on the control console no matter what, okay? Uh, okay. I'm going to get started. You go and rest. Have some food and water if you want. Suzaha handed Kagari the provisions she'd bought, then went inside and poked her head into the cargo space under the control console. She connected the IBM 5100 she'd stored there to a portable terminal she'd brought from the future. By all appearances, it was an early 2000s cell phone, but inside, it was a miniaturized quantum computer from the year 2036. Of course, future Daru had made it himself. When she booted up the IBM 5100, rows of numbers started to appear on the screen. What are you doing? Kagari was looking in from outside the machine. Did you study the year 2000 problem? I studied it a little at the orphanage. In the end, nothing happened, right? That's what everybody thinks. Huh? It wasn't made public, but at the time, a lot of places and a lot of countries had serious problems because of it. Really? The issue was this computer, the IBM 5100. It's got an old programming language on it, and the engineers weren't able to fix the program. In fact, they didn't even know that an important program existed that was written in this language. The race to develop the time machine was the beginning of the Third World War, but... There's a chance that something that happened during the year 2000 problems and the divisions that resulted from that were a deeper cause. She didn't expect a 10-year-old like Kagari to understand this, but she didn't feel like taking the time to explain. And the year 2000 is a special year, you see. All of the world lines temporarily converge here, this means that it's possible the year 2000 problem has a huge effect on all the world lines. The world line in the gap that we're trying to reach, Steins Gate, is no exception. She looked down at the terminal connected to the IBM 5100. So this is a patch program to keep the year 2000 problem from ever happening. Right now, the terminal was converting the patch into the language used by the IBM 5100. The next step was to spread this program all around the world in the form of a virus, and the year 2000 problems that this era's engineers missed would completely disappear. The word connect appeared on the terminal's subscreen. Okay, it's connected. She'd been told that in Japan in this era, ADSL was still in the test phase, and most normal users connected to the internet by low-speed dial-up using ISDN. But in major city areas like Akihabara, universities, labs, and some big computer companies were starting to use fiber-optic broadband. Some of them were even using wireless LANs. Suzaha cracked her way into one of those. Daru had laughed when he'd said that with 2036 technology, cracking late 20th century network security was a joke. But he'd been right. B but if you change the future, won't that change the world we were in? Surprisingly, Kagari had gotten the gist of what Suzaha had just told her. 
That's right. I refuse to let that world exist any longer. So I've come here to reach Steins Gate. <laughs> Suddenly, the uneasy look on Kagari's face vanished. It was as if her soul had left its body. Suddenly, her face was expressionless, and her eyes were wide. Voice, I can hear God's voice. Kagari? You can't do that. It's not right. You can't do that, Big Sis Suzaha. You can't. Huh? Kagari was acting strangely. Suspiciously, Suzaha reached her hand out towards her. But... She slipped past Suzaha's hand. And quicker than any child should be able to move, she slammed her shoulder straight into Suzaha's body. <laughs> Suzaha was caught completely off guard. That's how fast it was. Kagari's shoulder hit her in the solar plexus. She bent over and collapsed onto the seat. Kagari tore the terminal out of Suzaha's hands. The cables connecting it to the IBM 5100 were ripped out, and errors displayed on both screens. What, what are you doing? Kagari didn't answer the question. Instead, she grabbed the backpack that Suzaha had placed on the seat and spilled its contents onto the floor. There were MREs, spare parts, clothes, and a semi-automatic pistol. Suzaha couldn't believe it. Kagari was going to try and pick it up. Stop it! She forced herself to ignore the pain as she jumped on Kagari's body. But another unbelievably powerful body slam knocked her back. <laughs> Something cold was pushed right up against her brow. Don't move! Kagari's tiny hands weren't shaking at all as they clutched the semi-automatic pistol. In the space of an instant, the safety on the gun had been flipped off. That's when Suzaha realized that this wasn't just a temper tantrum. Suzaha was the one who taught her how to use a gun. That's why she knew that Kagari was perfectly calm. Are you insane? Put the gun down, now! Stop doing this! You're the one who needs to stop! What? You can't change the world! You're not making sense! There was no hesitation in her eyes. Instead, Suzaha saw only resolve. Do you want the war to happen then? I don't know anything about that! I just want to go back to my old world! Then, that's never going to happen. We've already used the time machine to interfere with the past. The world lines changed. There's almost no chance we can go back. Shut up, shut up! I'm going to save mommy! You can't erase this world! I won't let you! Kagari turned the gun towards the IBM 5100. S stop Before Suzaha could stop her, she yanked down on the trigger. Again and again. Stop it, Kagari! Please, stop! And then Kagari jumped out of the time machine. And Suzaha never saw her again.
On every night that passed, she remembered Kagari. Suzaha had spent some time looking for Kagari when she'd first come to this era, but in the end, she'd never found anything. But Kagari Shina, who was now 22 years old, was here in Akihabara. Suzaha was sure of it. Oh, Mahotan! Hey, hey! Daru was sitting at the computer next to Suzaha and talking into his monitor. The monitor was displaying a video chat screen. On the screen was a young girl dressed in slovenly fashion. <clears throat> no, a proper, fully grown lady. <laughs> okay, so this is new. He, he never talked to her uh, via the internet before like that with a video cam, so this is new. Look at her face, what the heck? Oh my gosh. Yo, me literally every morning. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a mood right there. That's funny. Also, I like Skype up there at the top. I can't tell if it has an S, it looks like it could just be Kype. <laughs> morning. It was 8.30 p.m. at the Future Gadget Lab in Akihabara. Meanwhile, Victor Contrio was an hour off from usual due to daylight savings time, and it was 7.30 a.m. Hiajo? You okay? It's early. She probably just got up. Maho was a mess. Her hair was never combed right, but her eyes were bloodshot, and her gaze was wandering. The spots under her eyes were too dark for the little bit of makeup she'd applied to cover them up. Her cheeks were sunken, which made her look even tinier than usual. <laughs> on top of all that, her skin was terribly pale. She looked like something out of a zombie movie. Anemic Mahotan for the win. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Normally, she would have gotten upset at Itaru's joke. But either she'd gotten used to it, or simply given up, because she said nothing. How are things going there? I've managed to rebuild it to how it was before Okarin took it apart. I think it does most of what it did before. Itadu glanced towards the development room, past the curtain in the back of the lab. Right now, he was working with Maho to recreate what Okabe had called the Time Leap Machine. Oh, really? Huh? Wait, why? Wait, did I miss something? Uh, okay. When did she say she was going to do that in this route? I don't remember her saying that. Huh. Okay. Interesting. It's not going well? Yeah. It's just not stable. It ends up being a normal microwave. I see. I wonder what's wrong with it. If we could ask Okarin, I'm sure things would be different. We can't do that. He'd get really mad if he even knew we were working on this. Oh, so this is new. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is just info that that they didn't tell us. They're doing this behind our back. Interesting. Okay. Uncle's... Afraid. He's afraid of the power of the world line convergence. It won't be easy to convince him. In fact, it had almost been a year since she'd first tried and failed. Hmm. There was a moment of silence. Uh... 
Wait, Mahotan, are you asleep? What? <laughs> Maho's whole body jerked, and she almost fell out of her chair. <laughs> the, that was close. I almost went back to bed before I left for work. You know, you're working too hard. If you get sick, it'll only slow us down, you know? I'm fine. And actually, after all this work, I'm still not as good as the real genius. I don't think so. You know, I think you're a genius. I don't need you to make me feel better. I've got all these hints about the time leap machine that Okabe told me about. And I still can't find the answer. How did she manage to compress all that memory data and send it to the past? Kuditz managed to do it, but I... Aw. Maho seemed upset. So what did we tell her on this route that I... Am I, am I forgetting something? Did we talk to her? I'm trying to think. Because... I, I thought on this route we hadn't talked to her about... Time leaping and all that yet, did we? Did we... Because... Uh, I'm trying to think. Because when, when we talked to her and we had that cute moment when we sat by her bedside. Oh, no, we did. Oh, that's right. I think I'm getting confused. I'm getting all the world lines mixed up, I think is what's happening. No, we did talk about some of that, didn't we? I think we did it when we were in uh, Dadu's room. Right before we uh, fled with... Uh, with, uh, with Ma- with, uh, not Maho, with Moika chasing after us and all that? I think that's when we told her. Okay. Huh. Man, okay, I'm- I'm really getting confused my whole- After going through, like, four different endings up to this point, I'm- I'm mixing together different ones at different times, so. Okay. Maho seemed upset. It was obvious, even through the monitor. Oh, I'm sorry. This isn't the time to complain, is it? Is there anything else to report for today? If not, I'm going to head to work. There's one more thing. Suzaha looked at Itaru. About what you'd asked me to look into. Did you find something? Nothing clear yet. I see. I've done some breaking and entering into a bunch of networks, and taken things about as far as it's safe to do so. I'm not blaming you. Tell me what you know. No, if you want to start screaming insults, I wouldn't mind that at all. Dad. <laughs> Hurry. I'm running out of time. Sure, sure. Itaru opened a different window on the monitor. He displayed one of the text files in it. It was a record of the information Itaru and Suzaha had collected. First, the incident where you were attacked in the hotel basement. The cops say it was some kind of crazy cultist on a drug trip. But that's definitely a lie. A lie? Just like the police announcement said, he was an assistant professor at the college. And that's fine, but I can't find anything linking him to a cult at all. I tried accessing public safety's secret data file on the cult too, so I'm certain of it. So they're lying. If you look at At Channel, you'll sometimes see people who look like they're from the cult, claiming that they're innocent and that the whole thing's a conspiracy. Whenever that happens, the haters show up instantly, and they beat the daylights out of the guy. And the haters always have this really well-made fake evidence, digitally altered images and stuff. 
There's no way that's a coincidence. Really? I don't know a lot about this at channel thing. Most of the big sites have agents on them, including at channel. And they get paid, like it's a business. So they do it 24 hours a day, from morning till night. Information control. Propaganda. Politicians and bureaucrats use them to influence public opinion on the net. There are even companies that specialize in this sort of thing. Wow, that is too real right now, bro. That is too real for what <laughs> for what has been going on in the world right now. That's all I'll say on that, I guess. I see. I can understand that. America has the same thing. These agents can change their IP, but they can't hide from me. So I did some research, and there's an insane amount of agents assigned to that case. It's to the point where I have no idea where the money to pay them is coming from. I see. What about the attack on your workplace, Dad? Same deal. The police called it a fight between foreign mafias trying to expand their territory in Japan. The media never questioned the story at all, and even people on the boards of the famously skeptical AT channel believed everything they were told. Of course, there was no mention whatsoever of Russia or CERN. Dude, oh my gosh, that is kinda too real, oh my goodness. So I decided to post a thread where I pretended to be a witness and said I saw some Russian special forces. And wow, I was amazed. Talk about some serious tryhard trolling. I got ticked enough that I almost doxed the agent's real name, his company name, and everything else. Evidently, he'd been really irritated. It was rare for Itaru to get so angry. Or maybe it wasn't, she decided. In other words, pressure came down from somewhere to shut down discussion. That's Japan for you. A real free country. <laughs> America's no different, is it? You've got that right. <laughs> The two of them smiled at the joke. Oh my gosh, it's too real. Anyway, so that's all I can do. I see. That's enough. Thank you. Hiajo, you think you can get permission from the lab to come to Japan? Well, I keep sending requests to go as Dr. Leskinen's assistant but they keep turning them down. Dr. Leskinen's here now, right? Yeah. He's researching the new encephalitis. Right, okay. Yeah, so this is... So, this is where she was in the first route, but obviously she wasn't doing this, so this is like, this is filling in the gap of what these guys were all doing while we were dealing with the other stuff. Interesting. That's kind of cool. Since it had nothing to do with artificial intelligence, it seemed Maho wouldn't be allowed to go along. But that's fine. If they keep turning me down, I've got ideas of my own. What are you going to do? Don't tell me! You're going to defy your superior officer's orders to drop the case? And then you'll get caught by the bad guys? I've seen that hentai before. Oh my gosh, dude. Hey, hey, Maho, say, k kill me, in as frustrated a voice as possible. Huh? Dad. <laughs> Get him, Suzaha. Put him in a chokehold. Do it for me. Do it for, do it for all of us. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Suzaha's hand went for her back pocket. 
S sorry Back pocket? What? Itoru's shoulders slumped as he apologized. Lately, she'd been able to put a stop to Itoru's terrible jokes just by doing that. But is that where her gun is? <laughs> she wasn't sure if it was a good thing or a bad thing that she knew exactly how to handle him. <laughs> hey, whatever makes him stop, you know? Well, anyway. I should be there before too long. Okay. Tell us when you've got a date. Oh, and Hiajo. If you're going to work, you should take another look in the mirror first. <laughs> Just before they ended the call, Suzaha decided to warn her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maho stood up and walked towards the closet without turning off the camera. She vanished from view, but a moment later... Yeah! <laughs> she must have seen how terrible she looked, because she let out a very unfeminine scream. <laughs> they relaxed for a moment after turning off the video chat. Suzaha thought back to the time before she'd become a time traveler. She did this every time she got off the video chat with Maho. Uh. Maho Hiajo. Someone who helped build the time machine, huh? It was after Maho had gone back to America that she'd volunteered to help Suzaha and Itaru with the time machine. That meant that when Itaru Hashida completed the time machine 25 years from now, Maho Hiajo must have contributed in some way. But... I know I shouldn't say too much about the future. But there was nobody by that name helping you, you know? Oh, really? Because she was in the fourth ending, right? She was over the... Uh... She, we, we heard her over the uh, the the, wa the walkie-talkie or whatever, right? Huh. Huh? Really? Which means she probably left the team at some point. I don't know whether it was of her own free will, or due to some external factor. But if nothing else, I don't think she was part of the core team. I see. She's pretty handy to have around, though. I don't really want to say this, but there's a possibility she might be a spy. What? No way! Not Mahotan, of all people! Yeah, no, I don't buy that, right? That doesn't really make sense. Because she's, she's been left out of the loop by uh, Leskinen, right? And, and in the first route, it was because she, she overheard that they, like, forced her into the situation, like, where they forced her into the situation where she, uh, she, she got brainwashed, right? So, yeah, I don't buy that. Sorry. I just want you to remember that it's a possibility. I told you, the war of information that comes before the Third World War has already started. Either way, we can't let anybody find out the machine's secrets. Just make sure you're very careful about that. Y yeah So how are you going to work on the time machine going forward? Hmm. We really need Okarin's help. That's the thing. I don't know if we can persuade Uncle Okarin. I might have to do it by force. Who was it that tried that before, and then it failed? <laughs> <laughs> Suzaha pursed her lips. Even with a gun in his face, Dintaro Okabe still wouldn't get in the time machine. To be honest, Suzaha was out of options. She stifled a sigh. 
It didn't do any good to let herself get down. Come to think of it, how are things with Mom? Huh? I'm more worried about that. Are you? <laughs> it's like Mom and Dad getting together, or the Third World War happening and the rest of the world like getting plunged into chaos uh, with it. Uh, <laughs> like, I guess this one like directly, directly affects her, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Is everything okay? I'm still going to be born, right? Oh, well, is that more important than the time machine? <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, I think this just transitioned. I remember talking about this before. I remember I remember them talking about this, so this must have been replaced with something else, like the whole Maho section was replacing a different section. Was this the hairspray thing, where she puts the hairspray to the back of, uh the back of Daru's head or whatever? I wonder. I can't remember if that was, like, now or a time prior. Suzaha stormed over to Itaru. You can't screw this up, Dad! Y yeah Daddy's gonna do his best, okay? All you ever do is talk. You even wasted those movie tickets we gave you, didn't you? She meant the pair of movie tickets that Mayuri and Fares had conspired to give them at the Christmas party. <laughs> the, that was because Okarin and Miss Fubuki collapsed, you know? We were so busy with hospital visits and stuff that the movie left the theater. It's not like it's my fault. But I heard that when they tried to give you new tickets, you turned them down. Who told you that? <laughs> Big Sis Mayu and Big Sis Dumi, obviously. Th that's because... You know! It's not very manly to make those two do all the work, is it? <laughs> so, did you go and do something yourself? <laughs> this isn't going to work. Maybe this was a more important problem than the time machine. Suzaha brought her hands up to her head. <laughs> Listen, Dad. I'm not going to be around to lecture you like this forever, okay? I'm leaving soon. Oh. Suddenly, there was a sad look in Itaru's eyes. Don't make that face. I promised I'd stop worrying about it. For the past six months, Suzaha had been thinking about whether it was really right to erase this world. But in the end, it was none other than Itaru who'd pushed her to go ahead. I'm sorry. She couldn't bear to see her father so depressed, so she patted his broad back. Don't just sit there and be glum. Send Mom a message, and see if she's free sometime. And if she is, invite her to a movie. Yeah? That's way too sudden. I don't care if it's sudden or not. Do it anyway. Okay? This is an order. <laughs> uh, an order? What's your answer? Sir, yes, sir! Satisfied, she headed off to take a shower. Oh, but before that, I'm going to hit the convenience store. <laughs> I actually haven't eaten yet. I'm probably going to be up all night again. So I want to get there before it gets too late. Still hunched over, he pointed towards the development room. He was pointing at the phone wave named Subject to Change, Unit 02, that was put together, but still undergoing testing. Eh. Ugh! Don't glare at me like that! 
I'll eat as healthy as I can, so please forgive me. Vanilla. Huh? I want ice cream when I'm done with my shower. Vanilla ice cream. <laughs> okay. I'll go buy you a lot of really top shelf stuff. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just one thing is fine. Sir, yes, sir! <laughs> that was enough to cheer Daru up. He took his wallet and ran out of the lab. He's such a handful. Alright, so this is the shower thing, which is when uh, her and Kagari are going to get into a fight, right? Okay. She had just about taken off her jacket so she could take that shower. But... Suzaha! Itaru had come back into the lab. What is it? I found this on the stairs. Right, yep, and then, yep, that's why Kagari comes is for that, so... Itaru showed her a keychain he was holding. It was a round anime character, whose color had faded to a smoky green. It was... an upa. Do you know whose this is? Big Sis Mayus, probably? She leaned forward to take a closer look, and then felt like she was experiencing deja vu. I've seen this upa somewhere before. She'd seen it before? She couldn't really remember when. But her internal alarms were going off. This keychain was extremely important. Uh... Upas were common enough that you could find them anywhere. The plastic edges had worn down. The paint was faded and coming off in places. But there was no dust, and there were no stains. Instead, it shone brightly as if its owner had put a lot of effort into taking good care of it. The chain was so old that part of it had snapped off. That was probably how it got dropped. Where was it? I've seen this before. Did Mayushi show it to you? I don't know. She stared at the green upa in Itaru's hands. And then, in her mind, she heard a young girl scream. Yup, okay. This is Mommy's Upa keychain. I'm giving it to you. Take good care of it, okay? <laughs> she gasped. A feeling of indescribable terror raced down her spine. Th this can't be... Kagari's? That was when she'd last seen it. August 13th, 2036. The day she'd gone into the time machine. That's when she'd seen this upa. It was older and more worn down now, but the more she remembered that day, the more certain she became. This was the upa that Mayuri had given to Kagari. She'd seen Kagari holding it and crying to herself many times before. Kagari? You mean future Miss Mayu's daughter? Yeah. Did you find her? No. But she knows where I am. W what do you mean? She's watching this lab. Satisfied, she headed off to take a shower. Ever since then, 
Her careful efforts to defend the time machine had paid off, and she hadn't seen any sign of Cogarty. But she never thought she'd be watching the lab. No, it would have been obvious if I'd given it any thought. She's trying to stop us from reaching Steins Gate. She doesn't want this world to end. Which means she's watching not just me, but you too. Huh? Me? Well, I don't think your life is in danger. Probably. If you believe what we know about how world lines work, you live till at least 2036. But she might come to interfere with your research, so we can't reach Steinsgate. A lot of bad things had been happening around Suzaha, Itaru, and Dintaro Okabe. There was some possibility that the final target was Itaru. From now on, just be safe. Lock the door whenever I'm not around. Uh, okay. Got it. Even if Uncle Okarin, Mom, or Big Sis Mayu are here, don't leave it open. It might not help much, but make sure you use the door chain, too. You know, Okarin and Mayushi are one thing, but if I did that when I was alone with Amaneshi, don't you think that'd give her the wrong idea? Ugh, that's true. If that makes her not like me, my whole family could be in trouble. Mm. Suzaha groaned softly, unsure of what to do. If you'd only gotten to be her boyfriend sooner, there wouldn't be a problem. Wait, we're back to that? <laughs> Just be careful, okay? Suzaha decided to keep the green Upa keychain. She softly ran her fingertips over it as she stared at it. Hey, Suzaha, Kagaritan's not related to Mayushi, but she's still her daughter, right? That's right. Could somebody raised by Mayushi grow up to be the kind of person who'd assault someone? <sighs> I just can't imagine it. From what you've told me, I'd expect her to be a kind, easygoing, and cute little girl. I wish that was what had happened. Yeah. I thought that was how she'd turn out, too. But now, she's probably... From what she'd seen at the radio building, she could tell. Kagari had definitely received professional combat training. It wasn't just the simple self-defense techniques that she'd learned from Suzaha when she was a child. As she'd grown up, She'd been taught the cold techniques of a killer. There was no way to know where she'd been, or what she'd been doing, ever since she'd gone missing in 1998. But there was no doubt in Suzaha's mind that she was trying to ruin her plans 